Coming up, I'll show you how you can automate your invoice approval processes, infuse intelligence, and integrate your legacy apps in just a fraction of the time using Power Automate and its new robotic process automation capabilities alongside AI Builder, which are all part of the Microsoft Power Platform. If you are new to the Power Platform, it's a powerful, low-code platform that helps you build beautiful, intelligent, modern apps and automations, even as a business user, without being a professional developer or data architect. In fact, you can learn more by checking out our recent show with Charles Lamana at aka.ms slash intro power platform. So let's get started. We know from studies that automation of invoice processes can lower the cost associated with human error by more than 5x. So I've built a standard invoice processing workflow using Power Automate. This starts in a shared inbox where new invoices are received. Now the key here is that instead of manually sending approval requests to the relevant stakeholders, behind the scenes it uses AI to extract relevant data fields from the invoice, and then sends an approval request to the right stakeholders automatically in Teams. Once approved, this triggers a process to enter the relevant information into a legacy invoicing app. In the past, I would have had to do that manually, but now I can use robotic process automation to automatically enter data into my application. And of course, once the process is complete, a confirmation notification is sent back to the sender. So let me show you how you can build this yourself, starting with a few easy steps, and I'll show you how to quickly add more powerful automation along the way without knowing how to code. I'll start by using Power Automate. Power Automate is a visual workflow engine that's included with Office 365. So to get there, once you're logged into Office 365, you can get to it from the app launcher, or you can go to powerautomate.com. In our case, the incoming email with the invoice triggered our approval process. So we'll create an automated flow that is triggered every time an email arrives with an invoice. I'll click on the tile and give it a name. In this case, we're creating an invoice processing flow. So I'll give it invoice processing. Next, I need to choose my trigger. You see, there are many different built-in triggers available. We'll use one for when a new email shows up. And so in this case, I'll search for email and from the options, I'll pick when a new email arrives and click Create. We've just created a flow that will monitor a shared inbox. So I can create a connection to it by clicking on the ellipsis. In this case, I've already connected my shared inbox. I'll expand advanced options so I can set a filter on this action to only trigger this workflow if the email has attachments. And I'll pull those attachments. If I wanted to, I could also specify additional filters for example, in the subject or the sender, to limit when this automated flow is triggered. But I'll keep it simple. Next, I'll add a new step and choose a connector. Connectors help you integrate with other apps, services, and data, and actions invoke operations within a connector. There are over 300 built-in connectors to both Microsoft and other services, and you can also add your own. In my case, I want the flow to route this invoice email to my approval team in Microsoft Teams. So I'll add a Teams connector and route this invoice to the channel. Power Automate is natively integrated with Teams, so the Teams and channels within them show up automatically. I'll select the team and the channel, and I'll add a message. Next, I'll use data from previous steps by adding dynamic content. Here you see fields available from the email connector, and I'll use from. Let's save and test it. In my case, I'll manually trigger this. I've got an invoice here, and I'll send it to the invoice inbox. If we switch to the shared inbox, we'll see it coming in. This triggers an approval notification in Teams. And now within Power Automate, I can see the flow completed successfully in six seconds. So we've automated the routing of invoices coming from emails into Teams, and that's useful already. But now let's look at how you can offload some of the invoice processing to the service with AI Builder. I'll select Build to go to AI Builder to first create a model. You see, AI Builder provides options that guide me through building dedicated models for different scenarios. My invoices look like a form, so I'll use forms processing in this case. I'll give it a name. And now all I have to do is supply five examples of invoices I've received from a supplier. These can be PDF files or images. In my case, I have five invoices from Contoso 
that I'll upload. After uploading, I ask the system to analyze them. And after a few moments, it shows me the fields it has detected across the forms. You see, the system is smart enough to extract both key value pairs, in this case, invoice number, but also understands the structure of tables that have rows and columns. For our purpose, I'll pull out most of these fields. Once I've specified these fields, I can ask AI Builder to go ahead and train the model. Notice that I'm going through these steps of defining the model without needing to write Python or knowing any advanced data science techniques. I could test it, but to save time, I'm going to publish this model, making it available for embedding within my applications and workflows. Now I've got all this intelligence wrapped up inside the model, and I want to use it in my automation for extracting values from the invoice. To do that, let's go back into the flow and edit it. Now I'll add a new action. In this case, I want to call AI Builder, and I'll add a predict action. I can choose from models I have access to. In addition, some models like sentiment analysis are available out of the box. We'll select the one I've just created, Contoso invoices. Next, I specify the type of data that we'll be sending to predict. AI Builder supports both PDFs and images. In this demo, I'll assume these invoices are PDFs. And finally, we'll use the email attachment. Now, my email might have multiple attachments, and you see the flow designer will recognize that. As soon as I added this field, the flow designer automatically recognized that there might be multiple attachments, and it gives me a loop that will automatically iterate over each attachment in my email. Let's move the team's action to be within this loop. Next, I want to route this for approval using the fields that AI Builder extracts from each invoice. To do that, let's add a new action that routes the message to an approver in Teams. In this case, we'll choose a Teams connector, we'll post a choice of option to the user, and we'll provide them with three custom fields, approve, reject, and process manually. This is going to allow them to make the right decision on each invoice. Once I specify process manually, I can next specify a headline, and I'll specify the approver as a recipient. I'll also update the message field to use the information from AI Builder. In my case, I want to first see who the invoice is from. So I'll search for from, use the from value. I'll also need to use the amount of the invoice. So let's add that. I'll search for total amount and use the field from dynamic content. Next, I want to specify the date of the invoice. So let's add that string and search for the date field our date value, and finally, I'm going to add the job number or the invoice number. So let's search for invoice and add invoice value. That completes the dynamic message. I just need to add a question to the prover, and I'm done. So this extracts everything from the invoice to automatically build a sentence for the approver with the info they need using our dynamic content. Now we have a few possible outcomes, so let's configure a switch to handle the three options I just created. In the interest of time, I've created a flow with these options using the concepts we've already covered. In this case, I automatically reply back to the sender with the approval or rejection with a templated email. The process manually option is represented by default case, which will post the team's message post we saw earlier for manual approval. This will save the team a lot of time with manual processes. In our case, the system is automating the mundane tasks and routing to people for the approval decision and waiting for the response to continue. But we can take this even further. So let's get rid of the final manual step in our process, which is entering this information into a legacy system that doesn't have any APIs or ways to automate data entry. You'll see in this app, there are a set of fields here that someone enters manually. Power Automate enables you to do robotic process automation through a new feature called UI Flows that can help you automate this process. Let's create a new UI flow. In this case, I go to Flows, click on UI Flows to create a new flow. And I want to automate a desktop app running on Windows, so I'll select that option. I'll give it a name. And next, you'll see a guided experience very similar to the AI Builder earlier. I'll define the inputs for my UI flow. I'll enter the first one, invoice number, give it a sample value and a description. We'll be matching these in a moment using the same fields from AI Builder we've been working with. 
For now, these variables will be available for me to use in the application. I'll use this process for the next three. Next, I'll launch the recorder to record my interactions with the application. You'll see the controls on top of the screen. I'll first click Record. Now, as part of the data entry, the first step is to find the contact. So I'll add the field for the email address and use that to search. In this case, that's chris at contosa.com. Now I'll click Search to find the contact. Since we're entering invoice information in our case, we need to add to our Activities tab for this contact and enter a few values. First, I'll create a new job. Then I'll grab the invoice number from our fields and enter that in the activity. Now I need to grab the invoice date. Finally, for the balance or amount, I'll need to grab that, clear what's in there, and input the amount value. That's all the data we need to enter, so I'll click Save and close the app. That's it. I'm done with the recording, so I can stop it. Let's review what we've just recorded. You see the recorder captured all the actions I took. When I open each item, I see more information. Here you can see the screenshot of what was clicked. And the next one is a step that passes in contact dynamic field. What we have done until now is to define a UI flow that will automatically drive the user interface of my application by mimicking human behavior like left click or enter value. Let's use this UI flow in our automation. To do that, I'll go back to Flow and add an action with UI flows. This connector will allow me to invoke the UI flow we just built. Since we are automating a Windows desktop app, let's select that action. I can create a new connection that includes the connection name, account credentials, and the gateway. This is the same one we use with Power BI, allowing us to connect our machine to the Power Automate service. In my case, I've previously defined a connection called Ashwini's connection to the machine running my app. So we'll use that. And let's select the UI flow we've just defined. See, as soon as I do that, Power Automate automatically inspects the UI flow and exposes the input parameters. These are the same fields that we defined as part of the UI flow. And now we'll bind these fields with the information AI Builder is extracting from each invoice. I'll search for invoice. It'll return some options. I'll select response labeled invoice value. And we do the same for the other three contact, invoice amount, and date as well. Once the email is sent, Power Automate will send an approval request in Teams, which includes all the information AI Builder has extracted from the invoice. I'll click Approve and Submit. And now our legacy app is launched. Now the information extracted by AI Builder is automatically entered, just like that, hands-free. Next, you'll see that the system responds to me with an automated approval email that we configured earlier. And the whole approval process runs in about a minute. So we've greatly reduced approval time and human error by automating our approval process using Power Automate with its new RPA capabilities and AI Builder. You can get started easily with pre-built templates at powerautomate.com. And for foundational training, you can walk through our learning path modules at aka.ms slash learn to automate. Thanks for watching.